Okay, so this is a term that is thrown around by mentalists and deductionists all the time, and even used in the very popular BBC Sherlock television show. But what exactly is a luxury item, and how does one determine if something is in fact a luxury item to a person? Well, that's going to be the subject of today's video in our continuation of our analysis of the methodology of deduction. As always, if you haven't already, you need to watch the previous installments of this series in order to understand what we're talking about. Most importantly, what we mean when we use the term deduction, the general overview of this methodology, how to develop a general profile of a person, and how to determine the age and expense of clothing. A link to the playlist is in the description. So first we need to define our terms. What is a luxury item? For our purposes, we will define a luxury item as an item, accessory, or article of clothing that a person owns, the expense of which exceeds the affordability available to their current income. A person could have a luxury item for many reasons, but they boil down to one of three general reasons that will suffice for the purposes of this overview. 1. The person's current economic status is lower than it has been in the past, and the luxury item is a reflection of past wealth. Two. The person was given the luxury item as a gift from a friend or family member of a higher economic status. And three, the person invested in a luxury item that they had difficulty affording. Two questions thusly arise. Firstly, how does one determine if something is a luxury item? And secondly, how to narrow down the possibilities of how a person came by it? Now, calling something a luxury item implies that there is a contrast between the expense of the item in question and other things that the person owns. There are several points of reference that you can look at to get a gauge of this. In the last episode, we talked about how you can gauge the expense of various articles of clothing. So applying that approach, if you see an article of clothing that is noticeably more expensive than everything else the person is wearing, then you could classify it as a potential luxury item. This approach could be applied in the inverse way. Look to see if there is an article of clothing that is significantly older, less expensive, or in worse shape than the others. This could be a sentimental item or a hand-me-down. You could also use the circumstances of a person's life as a reference point. Now, as a brief disclaimer for what I'm about to say, I don't like using examples and scenes from Sherlock as intellectual commentary. Uh, it's a good show, but it takes a lot of embellishments with the skill of deduction. That being said, the deductions made by John in the very first episode of the series are probably the most realistic deductions across the entire show. This is probably because they're the closest beat-for-beat -beat deductions pulled from the book and simply modernized. So, and since the deductions found in the book are much more realistic than in the adaptations because Doyle himself was a deductionist and based Holmes off of a man, Dr. Joseph Bell, who was also a deductionist, um, considering that, this example, given that it's well known and given that it's pretty true to life, I think it's okay to use it in this context. In the deductions that Sherlock makes about John, he says something in regards to his phone, even calling it a luxury item. He specifically says, your phone, it's expensive. You're looking for a flat share? You wouldn't waste money on this. So in this circumstance, Sherlock has met John under the pretense of becoming prospective flatmates and splitting rent. So a man who can't afford accommodations on his own and is looking for a flatmate probably would have an income that is exceeded by the expense of the phone. Thusly, combining that with the personality data of John being a very visual, visibly conscientious, orderly, and minimalistic person, it stands to reason that he wouldn't spend his own money on such a phone. You can see how this same logic could be applied in other such scenarios, regarding what you know about a person's current financial situation, even if you're only just becoming acquainted with them. Of course, observing in context, Let's say, for instance, that the person looking for a flat share is a rather non-conscientious person and a frivolous spender. They might be inclined to spend money on a phone that they really can't afford and end up paying for it in a different way later. So, bearing something like that in mind, you have to look at the situation in context with everything and take these things as a case-by-case -case basis and not say, well, this was true in circumstance A, so it must be true in circumstance B, because the variables and factors of circumstance A might be vastly different to circumstance B, except for one data point on which they have a connection. So take it at a case-by-case -case basis and observe in context. 
So, what sort of circumstance would indicate one of the three means by which we discussed a person would come to have a luxury item? Again, with the disclaimer of observing in context, let's start with the first. The luxury item is reflective of past wealth. Past wealth could be from the person's own lifetime or past wealth of their family from previous generations. Uh, determining the age of the item will help in determining this. Understanding different period fashions and status symbols from the past will help you in narrowing this down and also analyzing the condition of the item itself and how the materials have aged will help you in determining the time frame of the wealth. Two. The item was a gift from someone of a higher economic status. This could be a gift from a parent to a child, from a rich friend, etc. In this case, the item will usually be more up to date, but most likely not the newest thing. Let's say there's a person who has a rich friend, and that rich friend buys the new iPhone 10, and then gives that person in question their old iPhone 7. Not the newest thing, but still something that our subject couldn't have afforded on his own. The item might have tells that reflect the behavior of the past owner. Again, going back to that example from Sherlock, he mentions the scratches on the phone, and the carelessness that would result in such markings doesn't fit the behavior of a highly conscientious army doctor. Now, I've done a video before on how to deduce if an item belongs to a specific person based on what personality traits the tells suggest. Now, this might not always be easy to determine, but it is something to look out for. But by far, the easiest and most obvious way to determine if a luxury item is a gift is through process of elimination. Like we said, it will usually be relatively up to date, which for the most part eliminates the possibility of past wealth, unless the person in question was wealthy until very recently through some unforeseen economic catastrophe. Bearing that in mind, we have to discuss the third option. The luxury item was purchased for the status. In this case, the person will likely take extra good care of it because they damaged their overall economic standing for a time, and sacrificed other things in order to acquire that item. The image of a guy who buys a very expensive car to attract women springs to mind, but it doesn't have to be that dramatic. It could be just a pair of name brand shoes, an expensive watch, an expensive suit, etc. On top of the borderline obsessive care that usually follows the purchase of such an item, the idiosyncrasies between said item and everything else that the person has will be more dramatic, directly correlating with the expense of said item, because the person will have invested a substantial amount of their overall income in this one particular item or a couple particular items. Uh, and thus everything else will therefore have to be purchased relatively frugally. Although, of course, this is not going to be the case every time, but it is the most likely. The guy who buys an expensive car to give the impression of wealth might also break the bank to further buy a set of name brand clothes so that nothing on his person indicates a lack of wealth. In this case, you can't determine definitively if the presentation of wealth is purely an illusion or an actually re a reflection of the person's wealth. Typically, however, those who indeed have wealth and spend it on glorified ways of getting attention will already be relatively well known for other things, while the unwealthy person attempting to garner attention for the presentation of wealth will be otherwise unknown. Again, observe in context to determine the specifics. However, the feigned presentation of wealth could be subtler. Take for instance a man who buys a really expensive suit for business purposes. If you see this man in every business encounter only wearing that one suit and never a different suit, that opens up the possibility that that's the only good suit that he has, and therefore it was an investment for business purposes. So in those cases where the image presented is designed specifically to give the impression of wealth and doesn't line up with other items that they own, then it was likely specifically purchased for the image. If you can rule that out along with it being an indicator of past wealth, then it is most likely to have been a gift. With that, we come to the end of this tale. Next episode, we'll be looking into the meanings behind the creases, folds, and stains on clothing. So if you're new and interested in this sort of thing, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to stay notified. If you learned something here, be sure to leave a like, and of course, feel free to ask any questions down in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, you can donate via Patreon or buy an Art of Deduction t-shirt. Links in the description. Links to all the gear I used to make this video, as well as some helpful resources are in the description as well. So as always, thanks for watching all you aspiring detectives out there. Arrivederci.